Hi, the side drums from Sonicware takes the shape and workflow from the sample track and the Lo-Fi 12 XT, but makes it a complete synthesizer. Here, every sound is built from two monophonic wavetables, a noise and a transient layer, that can be arranged in 22 different sound structures. So, if it's mainly built as an 8-track drum machine, it is also capable of making basses, leads, plucks, like any type of melodic instruments a monophonic synthesizer can do. I had the chance to design some of the sounds that are in the machine when you buy it, and in this video I would like to show you the process I used so you can design your own sounds too. So here I'll focus only on sound design with the side drums, and then I'll do another video to explain how to create patterns and everything else to make music with it. So here are a couple of sounds I designed for this machine. So first, let's see the basic to navigate on this machine. You can load 8 different sounds at a time, one on each of those pads on the bottom row. When you play a sound, it's automatically selected, and then you can access most of its parameters with the pads on the row above. Those are the parameters for the patterns, the oscillators, the sound, the filters, the modulators, the envelopes, and the effects. Each of those tabs have a couple of pages that you can cycle by pressing the pads again, or with this button on the left. And on each page, you will see some parameters marked with the letters A, B, C, or D. That means you can adjust them with the knobs A, B, C, and D here. And you can also click on those knobs to access the parameters that are grayed out. Like here, B controls the decay time, but if I click on the knob, it will control the distortion. So that's how you navigate. You select a sound, select a page, and change the parameters with these knobs. So let's start from the beginning and create a new project. So we start with a clean slate. That's the function button here with the button that says project underneath. That brings up the project menu where you can save, copy, or delete your projects. So here I will do select new, select an empty slot, and press OK. It asks me if I want to save the current project, which is the default one, so I'll just say no to go faster. It will take some time to create the project, and now we're in a new project and all these sounds are the default ones. So let's start with the first one. To design our sound, we'll mainly use the oscillator tab and the sound tab. In the oscillator tab, that's where you'll find the layers that make up your sound. You can have up to two oscillators, which are wavetables, plus a noise layer and a transient layer to make your drum hits harder. You can see on which page you are here at the bottom of the screen. Here you can mute each layer by clicking on the knob A so you can work on them individually. And in the sound tab, that's where you will find the structure of the sound. It's like a visual tree of how the parameters are connected. We'll see in a minute that you can load different structures for different kind of sounds, but we'll start with the first one, the bass drum standard that is the most simple. In this one, we can see that it's made of one oscillator, that's the zero one here, that we can detune or set to re-trigger with each note, and that's connected to a sweep, that's the S here, that makes the note slide up or down. We can set how far with the depth, how fast with the time, and we can change the curve of that sweep. So let's make our first sound with what we have so far. We know we want to make a kick drum, so let's sweep down very low, very fast, and use the curve to make it more percussive. And we can even tune it lower. Now let's go in the oscillator tab to find a wavetable that sounds nice. Here you can change the wavetable with the knob A, then the wavetable will morph while it's playing from the point C to the point B, that you can move with the knob C and B. You can change the speed of this morph with the knob D, and if you click on it, you can change the curve of that speed. And if you click on the knob C, you can change the direction of the morph, like forward, backward, back and forth, sine wave, looping, random, or in steps. And if you click on the knob B, you also have a shortcut for the length of the sound, to make it shorter or longer. That is directly linked to the envelope in the amp tab that we'll see in a minute. So with this, you can go get the texture you want. I'll try to get a sound that is simple in the beginning for the attack, and then gets more complex for the texture. Once you have a sound you are happy with, you can save it to the patch list. When you're in the oscillator tab, you can access the patch list by clicking on this button on the right. Then scroll down to an empty slot, or you can click on the knob C, that will show only the empty slots in the list. Then do menu and save. If you click on the knob B, you can add tags to your presets, to tell if it's a bass drum, a snare drum, tom, or anything else. You select them with the pads at the bottom, then click on the knob B again to save them. Then you'll be able to use these tags to find your sounds more easily, and you can even click on the knob D to display only the patches with no tag. Alright, so let's select another pad so we can create another sound and see some other tabs. So this sound will be a snare drum, 
that's the default one, but say that's the snare you designed. In the filter tab, you can change the type of filter you want to use with the knob C. So you have a low pass, a high pass, a bend pass, then a low shelf and a high shelf, and then a point EQ. Then the cutoff point is on the knob A, the resonance is on the knob B, and the gain is on knob D. You can have only one filter in there, but you can also have another one in the effect section. Though the effects are not saved with the patches we are creating in this video, so we'll see the effects section in the next one when we talk about creating patterns. Now on the second page of the filter tab you have a filter envelope, so the cutoff point of the filter can move with each note you play. So you can set how far the filter moves with the depth on the knob D. Then you have the attack of the envelope with the knob A, the decay on the knob B, and you can introduce a delay with the knob C. So the filter moves a bit after the sound is played. By default, the cutoff will be moved up by the envelope, but you can invert that with the button on the right here, so the cutoff moves downward instead. Then in the Amp tab, you'll have access to the Amplitude envelope with the attack on the knob A, the decay on the knob B, the sustain on the knob C, and the release on the knob D. So for example, we could emulate kind of a reverse snare if you put a long attack and a short release. Then if you click on one of those knobs, the knob A becomes the curve of the attack and release that we can use to accentuate this reverse snare effect. The knob B will be a distortion that we can add, but here on white note it just makes it louder. The knob C would be the panoramic, to put the sound more on the left or more on the right, and the knob D is the general volume. Then on the second page of the amp tab is where you can set which effect will affect this track. Do you want it to send it to the master effect, to the effect 1 or effect 2? Do you want it to be affected by the reverb or by the sidechain compressor? But once again we will see how the effect chains work in the next video, as this will not be saved with the patches we are creating anyways. Alright, so let's save this sound too. So back to the oscillator tab, right button, find an empty slot, then menu and save, then add attack with B, and I'll add snare and effects. Alright, so we've seen pretty much all the basics to create our own sounds, but we glazed over the structures, which are a quite important part of sound design on the side drums. So let's select a new pad. If you go to the sound tab and click on this right button, you can choose the structure you want to use for that new sound. They are all made for different types of sounds, so they all sound different. There are currently 14 structures in this list, but if you select one of the last three pads, you'll have eight more to make hats and cymbals. So that's a total of 22 structures available. We are not going to see them all in detail, but let's do a quick recap so you can have an idea of what's in there. So the BD structures are for bass drums, to make kick drums. The BD standard is the one we've already seen. BD-FM uses two oscillators, the first one being modulated by the second that you can detune. And the BD metallic structure is similar to the FM one, with the difference that it adds a ring modulation to the FM synthesis. Then the SD structures are for snare drums. The SD standard one mixes two oscillators, with pitch sweep and a dedicated filter module for the tone. The SD FM is similar to the FM structure for the bass drum, except it doesn't have the pitch sweep. And the SD tone uses two oscillators, but the second one is pitch modulated by some noise. That gives some classic 80s drum machine sounds. The rim shot, clap, and tom structures only have a standard version. The rim shot uses one oscillator with a sub oscillator. The clap uses an oscillator that is pitch modulated by noise and can be re triggered several times to create a clap sound. And the tom drum is one oscillator with a pitch sweep, very similar to the BD standard structure. Then the percussion standard uses two oscillators that combines FM synthesis, ring modulation, and pitch sweep for each oscillator. The percussion cobell uses two oscillators that are both ring modulated by some noise and then filtered. For the synth, you have two structures that are monophonic and that allow you to use the sustain of the envelope to actually hold notes. The standard version uses two oscillators, where the pitch and decay time of the second one are relative to the first one, and then you can either mix the two oscillator, or FM the first one with the second, or ring modulate the first one with the second one. Then the synth bass structure is similar, but with a pitch sweep and the signal can be filtered at the end.
Finally, the AC structure is to emulate acoustic percussions, or rather, it scans the wavetable differently to play the acoustic wavetables better. In addition to all the structures, you will have access to eight more if you create your sound on one of the three last pads. There are three structures for close hats. In the standard one, the first oscillator has two sub-oscillators and the second has one. Then you have a type parameter to change the tone. The metallic one uses some noise to ring modulate the oscillator one, which also has two sub-oscillators. And in the classic one, both oscillator one and two have two sub-oscillators, then they are mixed and filtered together. For the open hats, you have two structures. The standard one is similar to the standard closed hats, but with pitch sweep. And the metallic one is similar to the metallic closed hat. And for the symbols, you have three structures. The standard one is similar to the standard open hat, but with a tail parameter. The classic one is similar to the classic closed hat. And the structure for the right symbols uses FM and ring modulation in parallel to create a metallic sound texture. The bell parameter sets the balance between the FM and the ring modulation. Now, the interesting thing is that every or maybe most of the parameters in the structures can be modulated to make more interesting or more natural sounding instruments. We'll make one last sound to demonstrate that, but note that you can modulate almost everything. For example, there is a hat sound I've made that I've called Morph, because in this one, the aftertouch is linked to the wavetable selection. So if you hold one of those direction buttons to re-trigger the note you play, the sound will change depending on how hard you press the pad, because the wavetable will change depending on how hard you press. Alright, so to finish, let's design a synth. That will be a melodic instrument, so we'll see different things than for drum sounds. And at the end, we'll add some velocity and aftertouch to show you how it works. So I'm on this pad, I'll go to sound, then right button to select the structure, and I'll take the synth standard structure. Then I'll go back and forth between the sound tab and the oscillator tab to create most of the sound. If you want to play the synth like on a keyboard, you can press this pad button. And you can transpose them up and down with the arrows on the side. That's also here that you can activate the legato to link notes together. And you can also add some glides so each note glides into the next. From here, if you want to go to other pages to see other parameters or select another track, you will have to hold the function button. So from there you could go to the M tab to maybe change the envelope. Or maybe go add a filter. So say this is our sound. Right now it always plays in the same way with every note. So let's add stuff to the velocity so things can change depending on how hard we hit the pad. For that you go to the mod tab. And here on the velocity, you can assign two parameters, and for each you have a sensitivity, which is what direction and how much the parameter will change with how hard you hit the pad. And there is a threshold, which is to set the minimum strength required to modify this parameter. Okay, so for example, say we want to move the filter with some louder notes. So we click assign here, then go get the filter frequency, or maybe the filter envelope depth if you use that. Here you use the knob A to move the first parameter and the knob B to choose the second one. Then you set the sensitivity to set how far the filter can open. And if you go back to the filter tab, you can actually see where the filter is moving. And then set the threshold so it feels more natural to play. Maybe we could hear it better if it was like a low pass filter. And then you can add aftertouch as well on the second page of this mod tab. So it's kind of the same way to set that up than for the velocity. You have a sensitivity, which is the depth, and a speed, which sets how fast the parameter will change with the change of pressure on the pad. So for example, let's try to play with the resonance of the filter to see how it sounds. And 
maybe we can move the speed of the oscillator one as well. I crank it up. And finally, you have an extra envelope linked to any of those parameters. So say we want to link the ratio, for example, which will move the pitch of the second oscillator. And you can also loop that envelope so it acts like an LFO. You do that by pressing on the knob B. So maybe we can try to make some kind of vibrato with it. For that, we would select the pitch of the oscillator one. So that would be the tuning. We'll make it pretty fast and lower the depth a bit. And I think that covers everything you need to design your own sounds with the side rooms. You start with the sound tab to select a structure, set up your wavetables and noise layers in the oscillator tab, set up the amp envelope and the distortion in the amp tab, before adding a filter and maybe a filter envelope in the filter tab, and finally add variations with velocity, aftertouch, and an extra envelope in the mod tab. Then you're ready to save your patch. So in the next video, we'll see how to use those patches to write patterns. We'll see how to add automations and effects, and we'll also see how to change those patterns to create a full song, and some options you have to play with them live. In the meantime, I would like to thank everyone on Patreon for their support. I hope this video has been useful. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!